Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential problem. And make sure to stick to the end of the problem where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. All right, so I have eight to the power of six times five to the power of five. So for my solution, eight to the power of six, we can rewrite as eight to the power of five plus one because six is the same thing as five plus one. So now I have eight to the power of five plus one times five to the power of five. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So a to the power of five plus one is gonna equal a to the power of five times a to the power of one. Now I have this times five to the power of five. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times b to the power of m, this is the same thing as a times b to the power of m. So in this case, I have a to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 5, and because these two have the same exponents, I can multiply these two. So this is going to equal a times 5 to the power of 5 times a to the power of 1. And now, 8 times 5, this is 40. So now I have 40 to the power of 5 times 8 to the power of 1. And now, 40 to the power of 5, well, 40, this is the same thing as 4 times 10. So now I have 4 times 10 to the power of 5 times 8. And now if I have something in the form a times b to the power of m, it's the same thing as a to the power of m times b to the power of m. So in this case, 4 times 10 to the power of 5, this is going to equal 4 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 5. Now I have this times 8. Now 4, this is the same thing as 2 squared. So if I replace 2 squared with 4, we have 2 squared to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 5 times 8. Now if I have something we form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 5, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 10, because 2 times 5 is 10. Now I have this times 10 to the power of 5 times 8. So now... Eight is the same thing as two to the power of three. So now I have two to the power of 10 times two to the power of three times 10 to the power of five. Now if I have something from a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So two to the power of 10 times two to the power of three, that's gonna equal two to the power of 10 plus three, which is 13. So now I have two to the power of 13 times two to the power of five. And 2 to the power of 13 is equal to 8,192. And 10 to the power of 5, this is going to equal 1 with 5, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if I multiply these two, 8, 1, 9, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is my answer. All right, so I've x to the power of 16 minus 169 is equal to 0. Now, x to the power of 16, we can rewrite as x to the power of 8 times 2. Because 16 is equal to 8 times 2. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 8 times 2, that's going to equal x to the power of 8 to the power of 2 minus 169, this is the same thing as 13 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is the same thing as a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is equal to x to the power of 8, and b is equal to 13. So now I have x to the power of 8 plus 13 times x to the power of 8 minus 13 is equal to 0. So now, 
x to the power of 8 minus 13, this is the same thing as x to the power of 4 to the power of 2 minus the square root of 13 squared. And again, these two are both to the power of 2. Remember, if I have something to form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, I'm going to have x to the power of 4 plus the square root of 13 times x to the power of 4 minus the square root of 13. And now I have this with, remember, I still have my x to the power of 8 plus 13 from the start. So I have x to the power of 8 plus 13, and all of this is equal to 0. So now I have three equations here. I have x to the power of 4 plus the square root of 13 is equal to 0. I have x to the power of 4 minus the square root of 13 is equal to 0. And I have x to the power of 8 plus 13 is equal to 0. So for x to the power of 8 plus 13 equals 0, all I have to do is subtract 13 on both sides. These two cancel out. I'm left with a, x to the power of 8 is equal to negative 13. So now if I take the eighth root on both sides, these two cancel out. I'm left with x is equal to the eighth root of the square root of negative 13. Or sorry, the eighth, eighth root of negative 13. And you actually can't take a positive root or sorry, not a positive, an even root on a negative number. So this is wrong. So now for x to the power of 4 plus the square root of 13 equals 0, I'm going to first subtract the square root of 13 on both sides. So then these two cancel out. Now I have x to the power of 4 is equal to negative square root of 13. And again, same thing over here. This is not going to work out because you can't take you can't take the power of a positive number. You can't take the fourth power of a positive number and make it negative. So this is wrong as well. So now we are, all we are left with is x to the power of 4 minus the square root of 13 equals 0. So I'm going to first add the square root of 13 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of 4 is equal to square root of 13. Now the square root of 13, this is the same thing as 13 to the power of 1 half. So now, if I take the power of 1 fourth on both sides, now if I have something we form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. 4 times 1 fourth is 1, so these two cancel out. So now I have x is equal to 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth, so 13 to the power of 1 eighth. 